Hi folks, so today we're going to learn a little bit about how to plot data from Biochem Lab in Excel. I'm going to use the data from the first real lab that we've done, the Bradford or the Microscale Measurements Lab uh, for this. And I'm going to just go ahead and um, show you what I've got here. I've got Excel open and I also have our shared class folder available. Uh, and off the plate reader you will get uh, files in this text format. And if you want to open those in Excel, uh, I'll just drag one in right on into the Excel window, and that'll pop up a new Excel uh, window for us. So that's nice. Uh, now, the plate reader will spit out all sorts of data that we don't really need. Um, the only data we really need is this main block in the middle. And if you recall, uh, the plates are set up with rows. Um, in this case, we have 200 microliters in these two, the top, in these three rows in the top, 100 microliters of our blue dye solution, and these three in the bottom. And these are essentially all the absorbances at 630 nanometers. I'm just cleaning out a lot of this extra stuff because we don't need it. Um, and I'm going to start moving some data around. This is really all you need. So we had nothing in these wells. I don't need to see any data for them. Great. Okay. So in Biochem Lab, we typically will do most things in triplicate. Um, and so I like to split our triplicate wells apart just so there's room to work. Um, now, triplicate in these ones is essentially an assessment of deviation within the data. So if your pipetting technique is a little off from well to well, we'll be able to pick that up um, with the deviation from, from these wells. Um, it also tells us a little bit about what the average reading is. And so the first thing I like to do from sets of data like this is calculate the average. I will also want to do the standard deviation. Okay. Now I just resize that guy. Okay. To do average Excel, uh, just like any, any kind of math you want Excel to do, Excel is the best calculator you'll probably ever use, as long as you know how to use it. To get the average, you can just type equals. Equals tells Excel to do math. And then I'll type the word average. And then open paren to tell it what to average. And I'll just select the three above it. Those are the three triplicate uh, wells of that type. And that will show you that the average of these three wells is 0.1034. Um, and then the standard deviation, you can do the same thing. Hit equals to tell it to do math. STDEV. We'll just do the standard deviation, and I'll select those three wells. And it shows me I have a relatively low standard deviation between from well to well here. All right, so a couple cool things we can do here is we can select those two things we've just done, paste them down under here so I can do the same exact math. Uh, as long as you're pasting, it'll just say, okay, the Excel will say the three above me are being averaged for this well. And then the three above me, um, you know, in these three wells, which are what? One, two, three, four, five, four, three, and two uh, above me uh, are going to be standard deve. And so if you copy those, it'll keep that same relative uh, position. And so this one is doing now the average of C14 through C16, which is that one. And the standard deviation is now doing the same ones. Okay. So that's kind of nice. Um, also, we can make our life a lot easier just by selecting those two and see this little black box here. When your cursor turns into a solid black square, or cross rather, uh, we'll turn that into that solid black cross and drag it all the way across, and it'll do all of our math for us without having to do copy-paste a million times. So I'm going to just do that real quick. All right. Looks good. Okay. So what we have here is our nice averaged data and the standard deviation of both of those sets. Okay. And do some bolding just so you can kind of see that. Okay. So now we have the average and standard deviation of both of these sets, um, both the 200 microliter and the 100 microliter set. Another thing I like to do is put the X values in. And what I have, uh, we'll look at here is our protocol. So I'm going to go into my class here, four, six, and I got my microscale measurements lab. I'm going to look here at some of the dilutions we're supposed to be doing. Scrolling through. Aha, uh -huh. okay. 
So I need to figure out my x values. My con where my x values in this take case are my concentrations. And remember that our stock solution uh, was 0.2% volume to volume. And so if I want to do this, um, I might want to also figure that out. Um, and I, my stock concentration is 0.2%. So for my concentrations, this first one we have is a 1 to 100 dilution. And so what I can have Excel do is click that and then divide by 100 to give us our concentration and percentages. Very easy. I'm going to have to do this kind of individually because our, our dilution factors are not standard. We can't just tell it what to do. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Equals 0.2 divided by 80. That's our second dilution over here. And then the next one is 50. Oops, bad. Uh, next one is divided by 20. Then divided by 10. 1 to 10. Then divided by 8. 1 to 8 dilution. Divided by 5. 1 to 5, and the last one is a 1 to 4. So those are our concentrations. Those are the same for both um, sets. In this last one, I just put a blank of water blank. Um, so that can make our life a lot easier. Okay, so now we've figured out our concentrations. Um, that's going to be exactly the same for both sets, so I don't have to do all that math again. So I'm going to just select that well. I'm going to uh, select it and hit Command-C or Control-C if you're on a PC or a, a Mac. Copy it, and then I'm going to go down here for my 100 microliters. I'm going to right-click and do Paste Special, and I only want the values. I don't want all those formulas. I just want to do the values because I just want the same numbers. Okay. So now I have my concentrations. They're exactly the same as up here, and if you notice, there's no formula in these bottom ones. It's 0.05 instead of D2 divided by 4. So it just keeps the values, doesn't mess with uh, doing in the math. Cool. So we have our averages, our standard deviations, and our concentrations. The reason I did this last well, the blank well, was so I could subtract out what the absorbance of water was to correct it. And so now I'm going to say corrected absorbance. Okay. Um, and I'm going to subtract the blank from everything. So for this top one, we can see our average is 0.175, but 0.121 of that came from the water itself, or the blank, the buffer we did this all in. So to subtract that, I'm going to hit equals the, uh, the absorbance above it, and then I'm going to hit subtract and click on my blank. Um, that would be very cool, um, and that will give us the right answer. Yep, 0.05, which is about what I expected. But if I try to drag this over, it's going to start getting really confused. You see it's the same as above. That's because when we move this, um, if you notice, it's this one minus this one. If we just drag across, it's going to be this one minus this one, and there's nothing in this well over here, if you can't see that. This well is completely empty. And so we have to do something that's called holding that last one constant. And to hold that constant, you can just hit the F4 key, or you can put a dollar sign in front of both the K and the 17. And that will say... Um, no matter what we do, we want that same cell to be subtracted. So now when we try to drag this across, all of those values that are, are, the, are correct, um, that'll help us out. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that for my other set real quick. I'm going to first grab my average, then I'm going to subtract my blank absorbance. I'm going to hold that constant by hitting F4, or by putting dollar signs in front of the K and the 7. Um, that's going to subtract it, and as we drag across, we're going to have the correct absorbances. So now we have X's and Y's along with our standard deviations, and that's what we're going to need to do our plotting. So I'm going to insert a new uh, graph here. I'm just going to do a blank one, just a regular XY scatter, and it just, I, just don't, I don't want anything on it. I'm just going to build this from scratch. So, uh, cool, I got this blank canvas to work at. First thing I want to do is select my data. And so I'm going to just go to select data. Um, I'm going to add a new entry. For my X values, I'm going to hit this little red button, which tells me I can select the range. I'm going to name this one 200 microliters, because that's our data series we want to look at. 
uh, and I'm going to hit this button to select my X's and I want concentrations for my X's. And I'll just hit this to go back and then I'm going to select my Y values which are my corrected absorbances which I just calculated. And you can see um, once I get out of this I have a nice linear set of data uh, which is very nice. Um, I'm going to do that exact same thing again uh, with my 100 microliter data in just a minute. But first I want to do a little bit of a uh, zhuzhin up this, uh, this graph. So things I don't like on my graphs, for example, I don't like all these grid lines in the back. Um, I like to see a title that's more informative than 200 microliters, and so I might say uh, blue dye pollution curve. Cool. Um, and in fact, uh, when I actually put this in, a, in a, my lab report, I won't even put a title on it. But for now, it's just there to, for me to uh, stay organized. I'm going to add some figure legends to this. Um, I'm going to add a, a regular legend, which will tell me that that uh, type is popping up. I'm going to put some axis titles on both X and Y. And I'm just doing this by hitting the little plus. You can also do that by going up to here to design and hitting add chart element. Uh, and I'm going to name these things. Uh, what did I have on my y-axis? Uh, that was my corrected absorbance. Corrected absorbance at 630 nanometers, which is the wavelength that we uh, did this measurement at. And on my x-axis, I want to put concentration. And this was in percent volume versus volume. So there we go. Uh, there's our nice little formatted graph. Um, of course, this is a calibration curve. This is a dilution curve. And usually, if you have a linear set of data, you also want to model the, uh, the mathematical model of the data. And so I'll right-click on any of these points. Just selected the, I just clicked on a blue point. I hold to see the whole series is now selected. I'll right-click and hit Add Trend Line. This will bring up a bunch of options. Um, I always like to see the equation on the chart and the R-squared value, which tells me a little about how good of a fit it is. The closer to one that R-squared value is, the better. Um, and so that's a very nice set of, of data. Um, so that's great. A uh, couple other things I like to add to my data. Uh, we did all this work to get our uh, standard deviations calculated. Our standard deviations are used in this, in this uh, instance to put up our uh, error bars. So I've selected my data here. I'm just clicking on a blue point, and then I'm going to go up to this plus, and I'm going to add error bars. Uh, you can, of course, you can always add uh, from the chart elements up here. But I want to do uh, Y error bars because all of our measurement error is in the absorbance unit, not in our concentration unit. We didn't come up with any kind of error bar for that. But you can see that all of these are the same size, um, and those are not the case because all of our standard deviations are not the same size. So we should go and click on these guys, and I'm going to format error bars by right-clicking. And I'm going to set custom error bars. And I'm going to select custom error bars for the positive and select my standard deviations. And the same for negative so that they're symmetric. Standard deviations. And then once I have both of them exactly the same selection, I'm going to hit OK. And so my standard error, my standard deviation error bars are so small that they actually fit underneath those points, which is a very means I have very precise data. And you can see the accuracy of my data based on how good the R squared value is. Um, and so I was had a very good technique. Now to clean this up, I might like to get rid of this little linear. I don't need that here because I know that the blue points are 200. I need to know that that's a line. I can see that. So I'm just going to click it and delete it. And now what I'm going to do is do the same kind of thing for my 100 microliter data. Um, so I'm going to right click again to add data. I'm just going to right click in here and hit select data. Add a new legend entry. I'm going to name that 100 microliters. And again, I'm going to select my values. Now I'm going to select the X from down here, the concentrations that we had before. So I'm going to click my red button, do my concentrations, and my Y values I'll do for my corrected absorbance values. And you can see that the yellows and the, or the orange points here, the 100 microliters, and the blue points are actually very closely related. Um, I'm going to make sure this blue one stays up here and out of the way. Um, and I'm going to redo that whole data set of data here. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is select that data, that orange point. 
I'm going to right click and add a trend line. I'm going to put my equation in R squared on the chart. You can see I moved that other one so that you can, because it was going to overlap. I'm not going to put them wherever I want. Um, my blue data was slightly more accurate than this data based on the math model. Um, and they actually have a very similar slope and intercept, um, which is very nice to see. Um, and again, I don't need this linear, so that's good. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, I need to put on my error bars. And so I'm going to collect my blue, my uh, my orange data. I'm going to hit add error bars. Don't need the x error bars. I only want to do the y's. And again, I'm going to select those, right click, and go to format errors. Select a custom error bar. Specify the standard div bars for my positive and negative. And hit OK. So that is how to correctly format uh, a chart in Excel. This is pretty much what you'll do for all the Bradfords. Anytime we have to plot linear data, you're going to want to do all these steps. Um, I might actually like to pretty this up a little bit more. You can see how my absorbance goes down to negative 2 here. I don't think that's a real thing. Um, and so I'm going to just double click on that axis and set my minimum to zero, um, just so that the numbers all make sense. And make sure my constraints look nice. And there we go. So that is our nice linear data, how to plot that in Excel. And you'll pretty much do this anytime you're plotting linear data in Excel for this lab. Hope that helps.